Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. In this uh, video, I'm doing something a little different, something I talk about a lot, but I, I don't really write a lot about, and it's about tool calibration. Um, and a good example of tool calibration is using a, um, I don't know, a temperature sensor to find out if your oven's temperature is accurate, you know, that sort of thing. In this case, we're using one tool to find out how well another tool works. Uh, in this case, it's about getting all the packets and that's only part of the equation and I'm going to talk about that in just a few more minutes what that really means so I'm going to just jump right into it alright I don't want you up too much of your time today I'm using a Fluke OptiView Fluke Networks OptiView XG which is now NetScout who knows what it's going to be called later but it's the OptiView XG traffic generation settings so I'm just generating packets from this OptiView uh, to various other devices as just a scenario and what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep this relatively realistic. And the frame size, I'm using a relatively I don't know, mid sized frame, if you want to call it that. Uh, the frame rate and the utilization, 72%. You know, I'm not trying to blow things up with 100% load and that sort of nonsense. I'm trying to keep things relatively realistic. I'm just sending some IP packets, time to live 64, which doesn't matter. It's not going anywhere. And I'm not testing quality of service, so it doesn't really matter. And there's our first OptiView. We'll call them XG1 and XG2. We have good old switch in the middle. It's a uh, Cisco 37, I don't know, 40 something. So we basically connect this guy to there, this guy to there, and we generate traffic. There's nothing else on this switch. Literally, that's the only two devices on the switch. So don't worry about VLANs and trunks and routing, and none of that really matters. Okay, it's just everything's default. And what I did was I generated a bunch of packets. And what I wanted to find out was one of the other things that I, I don't find people do too much about is um, let me just get rid of this there you go one thing people don't look for is they count the packets right and they tell you I got hundred percent of them which is great but they don't tell you how stable it was how consistent it was and that's what I want to do here so this is a uh, quick spreadsheet I whipped up from my trace file and basically graphed the delta time between the packets I want to see how consistent it was and as you can see here this is pretty consistent all right so if you want to follow you know zero 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 that's milliseconds zero 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 that's microseconds so between 11 and 12 microseconds is the range at which this device is receiving the packets and that's what I'm trying to figure out and then of course you can visualize the variance here obviously all the way across and then this little tiny anomaly at the end but for the most part it's consistent so for the next test, I want to do something that a lot of people do. I'm going to take my laptop, it's my little Alienware, and he's also gig on the same switch and gig obviously to the XG, and I'm going to generate traffic in that direction. Again, for the people who know laptops, it's an Alienware and it's an i7, la, 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 la. and people think that matters when you capture packets, and for the most part it does not. And that's what I want to show you here. So we generate the same load, and we get a totally different kind of graph. And, and that's what's important to understand. Um, because I'm using a different PC, obviously, a different NIC, different operating system, but then I'm using Wireshark in this example. And in the first example, I use the packet capture tool that comes with the OptiView, all right? It's called ClearSight. So basically, I'm using totally different tools. And I wanted to make sure you understand that when you use your laptop, it's got its limits. I'm not saying it's a bad idea to use your laptop. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you should know what your limits are. Uh, and there you can see it's all over the map obviously it's jumping all over the place the second thing I, I did was I took my USB docking station and I used that to capture packets and this is also supposed to um, give you the same impression uh, of using a USB to Ethernet adapter which I see a lot of people using out there as well so off we go we generate a bunch of packets and again it's all over the map and again if you want to again look at the zero 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 and zero one that's ten microseconds five microseconds and basically you can see that it's just not like the first chart you don't need to get into it too much all right I'm gonna show you some numbers at the end of this and then lastly I got a little gizmo um, called a profi shark from profi tap and it's a USB device USB 3.0 and it goes between the device like a tap and but it you can run a utility it does the capture for you not me see I'm, I'm USB here I'm not Ethernet right so he's actually gonna capture the stuff for me and I was kinda wondering how well was this gonna fare so I did that and it was actually pretty good 
right? It was pretty flat with just a, you know a couple little dips, but for the most part, it's it's pretty impressive. So now as a summary, I showed you all that lovely stuff. XG to XG, I had no loss. 11 microsecond average, and the variance was less than a microsecond. The XG to my onboard Ethernet, 3% loss. 12 microsecond average latency, and less than a microsecond variance. So this is important, right? If you just look at the packets, you'll say, oh wow, the variance isn't that bad, and the average isn't that bad, but I dropped 3% of them, though. USB to, <laughs> I'm sorry, XG to USB docking station, I got a chuckle. This didn't go well at all. <laughs> But uh, anyways, now you know, right? And then lastly, XG to XG uh, through the Profi tap and 0, 11, and 1, which is pretty well like transparent if you want to look at it that way. Well, there you go. So the moral of this story is to take your stuff, your tools, and try to use them to baseline your other tools to find out the limits of those devices so you'll know what you can do. Because I've seen people running around with netbooks on gig ethernet running at 70%. And, and convince they're capturing all the packets, which I strongly suspect they're not. And if they are, I'm sure the time measurements are not accurate anyways. <sighs> That's one of the longer videos I've done. Thank you for your patience. Hope that helped. And uh, I'll have some other ones in a couple of more weeks for you as well. Have a good day. Bye for now.